I don't think this beard is long for this world. Is it itchy? It's just, I don't like it. And I, I don't know. Uh, it's hot for like. You I, yeah, me too. Today's artist problem is, it's more of a PSA, uh, especially for those of you that are just getting started out in oil painting. But when it comes to fumes, it's oil painting, airbrushing, spray paint, anything where there is toxins in the air that, uh, you know, cause those fumes that you are trying to avoid breathing. Inhaling solvents and inhaling pigments are hazardous to your health. Yeah, yeah, they can cause cancer, they can cause all kinds of respiratory issues. Now, when it comes to pigments, you're not going to really breathe in a pigment unless it's in something like a spray paint or loose. Um, the pigment in oil paint is basically going to stay in oil paint. And when it comes to that, it's basically like, you know, if it's like a cadmium or a heavy metal, you just want to avoid contact with your skin. You're not really worried about breathing that cadmium oil paint in. But for those of you beginners out there that um, are interested in oils, I want to give you a warning with peace and love. I used to do oil painting in my house. I had a studio and I thought I had good ventilation. I had the ultimate ventilation. I had a window to open. I noticed though, the longer I painted, the worse and worse I would get these headaches. Dizzy, nauseous feeling. But I was like, what the window's open. Turns out that that's not enough. Maybe if I had uh, a window on the other side of the room and there was like a cross ventilation thing going on where things were actually being removed, just the act of having a window open wasn't enough. So what did I do? Well, because it's me and I don't pay for anything, I got myself a giant air filter. Yeah, this little R2 unit I have been through a lot. Um, probably saved me from uh, collapsing. Um, yeah, so this is a, a really, you know, so in terms of options, if you want to oil paint inside, you don't have great ventilation, you can do the uh, the air filter, but they're not cheap. They're not cheap, but uh, my dad loves me and he gave me one. Oh, how entitled do I sound? So what are some other options that are a little bit, you know, more down to earth? Um, well, uh, I don't know how down to earth this is, but you can, you can wear a respirator, especially if you're spray painting or using airbrush respirators, highly recommended. It can work for oil paints, but I don't know if you want to, you know, wear it. The other thing, note, uh, while we're on the topic of my beard, which we're not, this is not going to give you a great seal if you have facial hair. So ladies, if you, ladies. So gentlemen, so those of you out there with facial hair, uh, keep that in mind that y y you may or may not be getting the ideal protection if you have, if, I don't, if, I, I, if you have facial hair. Okay. Can you still understand me through this? Yeah. I'm not gonna put it over my head. So oil painting, this is not really, I don't know, practical or facial hair. Again, just starting out, I like water mixable oils. These things are way underrated and you don't need to use any kind of thinners or solvents. Now that's really what the big issue is with oil colors is the solvents that are used and not only the brush cleaners, but the mediums, okay? When you're using water mixable oils, water is your brush cleaner, which means you don't have things sitting out open that can give you a headache. And uh, th these are our Berlin by Lucas, and uh, they're great. I, I really, they work like oils. They are oil paints. I've done several videos on water mixable oils and why I think that they are extremely underrated. But, you know, just for today's purposes, they are going to be, uh, they're going to alleviate that need for fumes. And again, you're, you're not investing in a, a respirator or a air filter or whatever. Now, I need you to understand because you've probably, well, you're probably thinking, well, I don't need to worry about this. I've got odorless thinner, okay? It's odorless. Yes, it is. Don't buy into the baloney of odorless thinner, okay? If you're going to use it, you need to take care of yourself the same way you would as just using turpentine or uh, odored thinner, I should say, petroleum-based thinner. But I know that there are a few of you out there that want to be the traditional oil painter. I don't want to use water mixable oils. I don't want to wear a respirator, which I can't blame you for that. I want to use real oil paints. What am I to do? Well, I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you. First thing, if you're going to be using those odorless thinners, 
that I highly recommend is get yourself some airtight medium holders. So this would be an airtight uh, brush washer. So when you're not cleaning your brush, keep a lid on it and prevent that from getting up in your business. Palette cups, when they're not in use, they're, they're metal. These just clip right onto a, a, an oil palette. Keep them sealed, okay? It's not going to alleviate 100% of the issues, but it will minimize it because it won't just be in the open air. It, I, I used to have an open thing of thinner just sitting in my studio, as I'm sure probably a lot of people do, um, not even realizing that it was causing some of those headaches. And, you know, I really know my stuff, but apparently I was a big dummy when I was 19, which was 40 years ago. The safest way to do traditional oil painting, and for those of you that have been watching my videos for a while, you probably already know where I'm going to go with this, is using a product like Chelsea Classical Studios Lavender Brush Cleaner, okay? It's not odorless. Guess, three guesses what it smells like. It smells like lavender. Um, Non-toxic. This is the only brush thinner I've ever seen with the ACMI labeled AP, which meaning it's safe to breathe, it's safe to have contact you know, with your skin in mild doses. I wouldn't bathe in it. Um, I was told not to drink it. I was thinking like, all right, call Brandon. He's the guy that started the company. And I'm like, hey, what if I drink it on camera? He's like, don't do that. <laughs> okay, well, I won't. But some of you out there are saying, well, that's great. I hate the smell of lavender. Well, don't you worry. They make a citrus one. And you can tell because it's orange, like a citrus fruit. And I might let you smell that more. Now, because there are... There are still no carcinogens in this, but because there's something about the acidity of citrus that is acid, this does have a CL label, but it is safe to breathe, just like the lavender brush cleaner. Uh, along with that, along with these brush cleaners that are safe to breathe, there's a whole line of mediums. So you don't have to worry about sealing your palate cups if, you know, you know, if you're using their DeMar varnish or you're using their fat medium or lean medium. Or, I mean, we've got all kinds of different things. And all of those are made with this lavender spike oil. Okay, that is the, the lavender spike oil is the flux capacitor of oil paints. It's what makes safe oil painting possible. Okay. And for those of you that don't know what a flux capacitor is, very good for you. Spike oil is what makes it all possible. It is being used in place of those petroleum based products, those turpentine based products to make these mediums. Because when you're making your own mediums, you'll need some fat, you'll need some uh, lean, you know, you need to find the balance. And um, because they use this lavender spike oil in their products, it's all safe to breathe. I, again, wouldn't drink any of it. Um, but in terms of the fumes, because that's what, let's just pull it back together. We're talking about fumes today, all right? Because of fumes, this is your safest bet. So you want to be that traditional oil painter? You want to you play in the big leagues? I would highly recommend Chelsea Classical Studio. Um, or you can get yourself an R2 unit. Um, this little guy and I have been through a lot together. Yeah. Hi, buddy. If you're finding yourself getting headaches, um, if you're afraid of uh, respiratory issues, the number one thing that I would recommend is following me on Instagram. Does that make any sense? Uh, it might not, Jerry. You didn't see it coming, though. Yeah. Um, we're, you know... I just, I don't post as much as my wife. My wife has like lapped me in followers three times over because she posts every day. I'm not going to be that guy that like floods your feed. I'm just kind of, you know, sporadic. Just every once in a while, I sprinkle in some, some love and joy. Behind the scenes stuff, uh, things that are going on in my life, uh, things that are going on in the studio, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, you're welcome. This has been a PSA. This has been like a the more you know. Do one of those. Make one of those. Don't breathe. Can you still understand me through this? I'm trying to think of the ultimate line. Where is Padme? <laughs> <laughs> no! That's a little uh, Revenge of the Sith for you.